Welcome back to Mobile World Congress Barcelona. It's day three, and we're here starting our day off with technologists from Bell, from TM Forum, and from AWS to discuss this really exciting topic, specifically around extending TM Forum's open digital architecture to AWS. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Start with a round of introductions. Over to you, Neil. Yeah, so my name is Neil Mehta. I'm the uh, director for IT delivery, and uh, I own a customer data platform, and my main area of interest is open APIs in the B2B marketplace. Yeah, good morning, I'm George Glass. I'm the CTO at the TM Forum, uh, and I look after all of the technology standards, uh, code, and frameworks that we develop within the, co the TM Forum. Uh, hello, everyone, uh, Aman Veer Singh. So I'm a principal solution architect at AWS from uh, Telco Business Unit. So my primary focus area is BSS, OSS, and uh, digital business marketplace. As George mentioned, uh, technology, code, and frameworks, that's what we're here to talk about today. 2024, it's gotta be the year of APIs, especially here at Mobile World Congress. So as you think about TM Forum Open Digital Architecture, George, tell us a little bit more about, uh, about OTA as a whole, about OTA Canvas, and what yep. developers can expect. Okay, well, so we've been developing ODA for more than five years now. Uh, we've got a very robust set of industry standard open APIs that are widely adopted, over 800,000 downloads of those APIs, over 1,000 certifications of those APIs by our members, both vendors and operators who are building and using those APIs at scale in their operations. But the whole idea of ODA is that it's a composable, componentized, capability-based architecture where the business capabilities of the components are exposed via industry standard open APIs. That gave us our, if you like, our functional architecture, but we needed a deployment architecture. We needed an environment to run that architecture in, and that's where the ODA canvas came in. This is a DevOps environment where you build your components as a developer in that environment, and then you containerize the component, and with one click, you can deploy that into a cloud-based environment. And that cloud-based environment, the ODA canvas, follows all of the principles of ODA in that the cloud environment exposes its capabilities via a standard set of APIs. So for security, authentication, load balancing, service mesh, those are all encapsulated via APIs, which allows us to deploy the ODA components onto any hyperscaler's canvas that is ODA enabled. So simplicity and standardization, those are the, those are the value uh, areas for operators. Absolutely essential. If we're trying to get the level of automation that we need, we need standardization. And APIs and the work that we're doing in ODA is driving standardization into our industry at a scale that we've never seen before. So we've set the scene here for ODA Canvas. I want to transition over to you, Neil, and talk about your API journey, e even before getting involved with, uh, with ODA. What, what does that look like? Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, so we at Bell, uh, we believe that APIs are the foundational building blocks of our transformation. And, uh, you know, the adoption of open APIs has really helped us uh, create new markets, uh, create new partner ecosystems, and it has really improved our customer engagement. And we would like to take a leadership position in the API space, not just from a Canada-wide national perspective, but from a global industry perspective. And we do this by participating with the TM Forum and doing catalysts and things like that. Um, so I would like to give you three specific examples. So uh, the first one is uh, we built this customer 360 API based on the TM F717 specification. And that was, uh, that's not fully released yet, but we've kind of productionized it and uh, given some early feedback back to the forum. So that's our contribution. Another one is uh, we have been participating in a lot of catalysts. And last year we did one with AWS and there were a lot of lessons learned from that catalyst. So we bring those lessons back into our development ecosystem and then we unleash business value to our customers that way. And there's a third area, which is you know AI. It's all about AI now and AI is galloping fast, but there is this notion of interplay of APIs and AI. And so we are also doing a lot of work with the forum in that, in that area. So we do think that APIs are going to be a fundamental game changer in the marketplace, and CSPs that um, adopt the standards and uh, accelerate creation of partner ecosystems to really solve customer problems are going to have a competitive advantage. 
And if I remember correctly, uh, this Catalyst project, you didn't just participate. You, yeah. you were a winner, right? Yeah, well, we, we won the Business <laughs> Impact Award, and it was an amazing team effort. Yeah. You also mentioned AI is galloping. Yes. At minimum, leaping, dare I say. Exactly. Um, so you've uh, perfect, perfect uh, le level set in terms of Bell's role in this ecosystem as a whole. Let's turn it over to you, Amanvir, in terms of the AWS contribution, the AWS interest, and how we've been leaning in to support not only Neil at Bell, but uh, the ecosystem as a whole. No, absolutely. So I'll go back to you know what George mentioned, that uh, TM Forum has been helping uh, in this whole journey of standardization, and they have been actually uh, the leader of uh, you know BSS versus standardization creating, and going back to open APIs, uh, if you look at uh, you know AWS has more than 100 implementations or hundreds of implementations of open API compliant workloads on AWS. Uh, we have vast ecosystem of partners who are again open API compliant. Uh, now that did give us uh, you know from uh, moving away from you know best of stack to best of breed decoupling platforms and all those good things now now truly to remove these barriers of integration and uh, you know help this transformation journey uh, aws now is uh, fully on board with the uh, you know oda canvas uh, and i think we have broadest and deepest set of services where uh, we can enable components like uh, monitoring using our services like CloudWatch and CloudTrail, enable components like notification and uh, using our simple notification service, simple queuing service. So I think using these services, we will, can truly uh, facilitate the interoperability between platforms. And uh, Bell is uh, our first launch partner, but uh, I think you know after this launch, we'll work iteratively and uh, we'll have that feedback loop where we want to contribute to ODA Canvas as well as we move forward. I think it's clear, open, open APIs beget strong partners, and I've got to imagine that aligns with your overall strategy, George, and engaging strong cloud partners as a whole. Absolutely, the APIs give the decoupling in the architecture that allows you not only to like swap out legacy applications, but bring in and foster new partnership arrangements. But remember, it's not just confined to the telco space. Once you've got the open APIs and you're exposing your business capabilities, that up, opens up the telco environment to an ecosystem of other vertical industries where you've got digital services and digital service integrators, and you can take those telco services, and it may be connectivity as a service, but it also can be things like security authentication, billing, charging, and actually take those services and use those to actually grow your ecosystem and dare I say it, in the telco world, grew your revenue. Yeah. Use case, use case, use case. You've been hearing it all show. We, we call that digitizing industries in many ways. We talk about the vertical impacts far beyond telco. Such an important part of the work we're doing here. But back over to you, Neil, as you, as you share your experience um, working with uh, ODA Canvas. What have been your experiences so far? And specifically, how has that refined your understanding of its value proposition? Yeah, so I mean, I can describe some challenges that we faced. So. I see two key challenges. One is the pace of innovation, and the big question is how do we modernize when we have such a big legacy footprint, right? So in terms of uh, the pace of innovation, uh, there's a lot of effort being put in, but the output um, is, is you know, slow to realize. And, and the key thing is we as an industry, uh, the CSPs, the partners, the vendors, we re really need to work hard in the adoption of the standards, making the northbound APIs developer friendly and accelerate the adoption and work together really hard. And, and that's going to accelerate innovation. And in the other area, so you know, we have over a thousand legacy systems and many of them are not changing much, right? So they're probably going to be decommed. Uh, so we need uh, these standard-based process APIs that enable our engagement layer to add value and innovation on the north side. Right. So as uh, George mentioned, uh, we are adopting a modular, composable, pace-layered architecture, which uh, allows us to kind of innovate in the northbound area. And we talked about this earlier, having that easy to use developer platform. You want security baked in from the very start, right? Yeah. How, how have you seen that manifested through some of your early exploration? Right, so security is uh, paramount these days. It's not a luxury anymore. So zero trust and uh, security first needs to be ingrained in the, in the development concept. And the ODA Canvas actually promotes that mindset. 
right? And uh, so, you know, a simple protocol like OAuth2, whether it's like client credentials grant or client assertion grants, right? There could be many flavors and developers often have their own interpretation. And when you, let's say there's a business flow and there are five APIs working together to create business value in a marketplace, the business function often works after a few iterations, but it is the security, the end-to-end -end security, which often fails and causes delays. Right. And sometimes it takes months to get that going, and that is what we're trying to fix with the ODA Canvas, is that the developer unambiguously and very articulately describes their implementation of security, and then um, once it is deployed in a compliant, tested runtime, the other services that work with this component, uh, you know, works without friction and, and it's going to be very easy, you know. Yeah, I can see you at the edge of your seat, George, jump in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the whole idea is that you, whenever you have the template, the design pattern for the component, security is an integral part of that design pattern so that all components follow a standard pattern. And then the canvas, also has a set of security services, as Neil says, and again, that's exposed through a standard set of APIs. So there's this complementary, the component has security baked in, the canvas supports security features, and therefore security is embedded in ODA by design from the outset. And it's the same, that's the whole principle of having a standardized pattern-based architecture, because we also have monitoring, reporting, and operational functions actually built into the component and an integral part of the canvas from the outset. You know, the number of us who over the years had a rag bag of systems, and then you're trying to get transaction logging across systems or trying to build security onto different systems that were on different platforms, on different operating systems, it was a nightmare. We're taking all of those pains away with the patterns in ODA. Standardization, simplicity, security. That's what I'm hearing. The three S's, if you oh, will. Yeah. Sam and Veer, to take, to take us home here, tell us a little bit more about what we're planning to do on AWS, how we're planning to build. What's our implementation path look like? Yeah, so I think, I mean, we, we all know that it's, it's all about the ecosystem these days. So it's all about partners, customers, and AWS, we always work backwards from our, our customers. Uh, so the approach that we are going to take is, uh, you know, we are going to have uh, Bell as a launch partner. Right. Uh, we are going to build Canvas together. And of course, you know, in collaboration with TM Forum, and uh, we'll have a feedback loop. So we don't want to, you know, build all the components together. We want to work with Bell. Uh, we want to, you know, take their feedback, you know, what is their pain point and are we really addressing those pain points? And then also feed it back to uh, the standards. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we expect something this year. Uh, we'll have a launch with Bell Canada uh, as uh, one to two components of ODA. That's a plan. And then from your perspective, Neil, what are you looking forward to most? Yeah, I mean, we're very excited about this co-creation, this journey. And uh, I believe that uh, this is going to be a game changer. It is going to be an industry advancing uh, work. And, uh, and it's going to, we're going to prove all the benefits of interoperability, the automation of deployment, and the clarity of uh, the security definition, among other non-functional services, like George mentioned, like, you know, service registries, event hubs, and authorization, and all of that. Like, and all of that uh, encapsulated in a compliant, tested runtime, right. which is the missing piece in the equation today. And I'll give you the final word, George. Where do you want ODA, uh, ODA Canvas to be uh, in the next one to two years? Well, when I took on the role of CTO in the TM Forum, my vision was that we would move away from creating paper-based standards and we would actually generate code and frameworks. But the code and frameworks is only as good as that which is in production. So whenever we develop it collaboratively with our members, what I love to see is to see somebody like Bell Canada taking the component with the ODA Canvas and a partner like AWS and actually going into operation with it, going into production, because that feedback loop that both AWS and Bell Canada have talked about, we love that feedback loop as well, because that then gets fed back into the standard. We enrich, we enhance the standard, and we make that better for the entire industry. And that's my vision, is to actually see the Canvas in production this year handling live transactions in an operational environment for a tier one telco. 
Absolutely, and that vision anyone can check out. They can go on GitHub right now, clone the repository for ODA Canvas, start building. I know there's tutorials, I've seen YouTube yep. videos, can take a look at the Catalyst project uh, that you developed. Congratulations again, but fascinating discussion here this morning. Thank you all for joining us and hope to see you back next year in Barcelona. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Robbie. Thank you.